Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Libra. If Libra is your solar, lunar, ascendant, slash, rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so we have uh, the... We have the Ten of Wands, um, and I laugh. I don't know why. It's a. Uh, it's not the not my favorite card, right? Um, it is the card of oppression or opposition. Um, this is yeah, Saturn and Sagittarius. It is really kind of ooh, yeah. It's got a hold on you, right? This um, heavy, heavy energy. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a little like or a comment, if this is your first time watching a reading, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, I appreciate it and I would love to hear from you. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at, I'm sorry, I got bit by a mosquito. <laughs> and I'm just, my arm is itchy. <laughs> okay, so um, we have, it looks like an eye, the nose, Okay, going into the mouth here. This is side profile, so they're looking this way. You can only see the one eye. Um, and here's kind of the body, okay? Now above the head we have, it looks like one, two, three children. Now we have an adult over here who looks like they're kind of chasing them around. So I kind of get this feeling of well, yeah, maybe growing up with like two other siblings or maybe these are your cousins or, you know, some somebody in the family who was definitely within your age group, right? You're not like the only kid to be born within 10 years of your family, right? You're not the, the only, not only the only child, but the only child in the family. No, I feel like you at least had a couple other um people your own age, okay? Now, we also have this energy of the playful, involved adult. Now, this maybe was a parent, it maybe was a grandparent, um, aunt, uncle, somebody, okay? Um, and I feel like this is, I can just hear kind of running through the house, right? The little feet pounding across the floor, um, you know, yelling and, and laughing and enjoying. Um, and then we have this grandmother over here and I, f I see this person kind of falling right here. If you can see, it looks like somebody falling and I feel like, and also right here, actually, it looks like kind of falling out of falling, falling. And I almost wonder if you're just really not that in contact with your family. And I wonder if grandmother, uh, is transitioned. If she has passed on, it feels like kind of this message coming through like a reminder, like things, things were not always bad. You know, your siblings, your cousins, they weren't always the worst. <laughs> um, they weren't always awful to be around. <laughs> um, but I do, I feel like this is, it really is this, uh, like, please try to remember. Like, it was okay sometimes. It was fun. It was actually even fun at times. Your childhood, um, you know, while everybody has, you know, we all have our struggles in, in our youth. Um, I think that this is kind of an energy of at least uh, reminding you that there were some good times and you were happy at times as well. Um, 
Now, I don't think this is kind of, you know, like our ancestors gaslighting us. <laughs> is that, you know what I mean? Like um, re receiving messages from the beyond and they're still trying to um, paint a pretty picture for us, right? And I don't think that's it, okay? I think that, you know, there's an energy always of your experience, your reactions, all of these things are valid, you know, if other people understand them or not. And, um, Whatever has happened as you've become an adult, maybe, you know, even far into your adulthood, uh, we sometimes fall away from our families. Sometimes it's one big event, something happens, and it's like, okay, I'm out of here, you know? Um, and sometimes it's just one little decision after another, and it leads you away into the world, maybe you know, moved far away or starting a family that's, you know, not really involved with your own family and you kind of, um, you know, s spend time with your spouses in their life and create a life with them away from your origins or whatever. Um, you know, but I do think that there is uh, some sentimentality here. And I think that this is definitely a grandmother who you trusted and you, um, you know, were close with. And I think this is a gentle reminder. And I just keep hearing like the running around and laughing. And, you know, I imagine grandma, grandpa telling you, don't run in the house. <laughs> Stop running in the house. No running in here. Um, you know, but, uh, it is, it's kind of a bittersweet feeling here. Okay. Um, now we have a large E right here. So I feel like there's somebody involved maybe with an E name. Maybe this is the grandparent, you know, their, their name might start with an E. Um, now I want to go around here and it, I see we have a Christmas tree right here, or listen, some kind of, um, ornamental plant. Okay. It doesn't, you maybe don't celebrate Christmas. Maybe you don't partake, right? Um, maybe that's just, you know, maybe it's, maybe you have another religion or you just really, I don't know, you're not interested in, in the festivities. Um, and I have to remember that we don't, we don't all celebrate Christmas. Now I go, I am, I celebrate Saturnalia, <laughs> but I just like wrap it into Christmas because you know, I'm in America and that is the prevalent, um, thing to do. Even though my family was, I didn't grow up religious at all until I was older. I became religious on my own, um, or at least spiritual or into the occult really. Um, but yeah, you just kind of, you know, it's part of the mainstream culture, I would say. Um, so I'm seeing this plant, right? And it is, it's giving me Christmassy vibes. Although, like I said, it could be, um, you know, any kind of gathering, right? Whatever holiday this might be. Um, it does feel like it is with family. Um, and... And I'm looking, I'm looking at this. It looks like somebody dressed up wearing a dress. Okay. Now I see another person over here and it almost looks like, oh, what a weird one. It kind of almost looks like some kind of demon or something, some kind of shape shifting thing, or I don't know. Um, but it looks like it's kissing the foot of this person in the dress. You can see kind of hunched over the face is right here. The eye, here's the foot coming out from under the skirt and there is a heart. Okay. Um, so really the feeling that I get from this, and I feel like this is maybe really connected to the original uh, story here is that 
it almost, I mean, I, the, the first thing that came to mind is like somebody within the family marrying somebody who was awful and it threw off the whole energy of things. And I wonder, you know, I don't know what it is about this person, but in your mind, they just are, they have a bad energy. There's like a dark energy there. Um, not just that they're like a, you know, annoying or, um, you know, like, I don't know, kind of a ridiculous person. No, this feels like there's a real darkness to this person. And, um, you know, whoever this is, it feels like maybe an older family member, right? Maybe mom, maybe mom got remarried or, or in, maybe this is an aunt that, you know, has like a second or third husband or, you know, whatever. And they brought this person into the family and it just almost like it just it gave people the ick, right? Um, because just something about them just really it, like stay away from that person, you know? And that can be difficult when somebody you love, somebody you respect, somebody that you've known your whole life, they suddenly kind of I mean, I don't know if it's that they're changing, but they meet somebody who seems so out of the norm of things, right? Just like you have this like really square mom, right? Very um, consistent and involved and um, even tempered and whatever. And then, you know, she's maybe gotten divorced, your parents split up and that was difficult and she spent some time on her own. And then next thing you know, she's like bringing in this person who is just um, like an abomination, right? They're just absolutely awful. They're mean. Um, they behave poorly. They, you know, it's just maybe they're even, um, they mistreat the mother or, or you or the, you know, your siblings or whatever it is. And it's hard to wrap your mind around, like, how did this happen? How did we end up at this place? So I feel like it's really tied to holidays. And I think part of that maybe is that, yeah, you're kind of around the whole family during these times. And then it's like uh, the behaviors get amplified and everybody is witnessing. And it can be very traumatizing to be... Um, you know, have no control over that situation, right? You're just kind of, you, you're like a forced active participant. And I, you know, I wonder if this dynamic is kind of at the core of why you kind of stepped away from the family life or at least that family, right? And I just, I, it seems like a weird twisted thing. Um, and I think it's like even, I just feel like a sinking feeling whenever you think about those times, you know, you're young and you, you might protest like, I don't like this person, mom, you know, or grandma or aunt or whoever. Um, but they're in love, right? And they're blinded to, um, the behaviors. They're not they actively are probably choosing to ignore what people are telling them, what you are telling them. Um, and that can be so destabilizing, right? Because this is a person who um, has raised you, somebody who is supposed to be safe, somebody who you trust. And suddenly it feels like, can I trust them? Can I trust their judgment? Because obviously... Um, they're choosing it not only against themselves, but they're choosing against the well-being of the people around them, their family. Okay. So this feels really, I mean, it feels really, really heavy. And that, listen, we're talking about that 10 of wands, right? And that is, that is an impressive energy. So, Here's the thing is that, you know, in your release from being close to this situation, um, there's so much freedom. 
I feel like, you know, there, you found so much freedom and even though you look back and you maybe kind of lament the way things went, the life that you had when you departed from, you know, being active, actively involved, um, maybe hasn't always been easy, but it's been your life and you've been able to, um, you know, make the decisions about who you let in, who you let close to you, you know, who you bring into your personal space, uh, your sacred spaces, your home. And, um, you know, I think that's a really important thing for you is to have privacy to have control uh, over who you have to interact with, especially in your private life. And so maybe you kind of strike people as being maybe a little bit standoffish or maybe um, they might even think, oh, well, they're stuck up. They're just, they don't talk to anybody or they, you know, they only have so many friends and those are the only friends that they, have. you know, um, like you are snubbing people or something, but I don't think that's it. I think it's just, you have enough people in your life that you feel comfortable with and to exceed that, right. Feels like it would be, it would put you into a place of, um, feeling kind of exposed or, um, you know, uh, it's a task for you to trust, right? And to go through that process with somebody new, um, it has to be something, you know, very, uh, special. Okay. And, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's really how sh things should be for the most part it, it, in our personal lives for sure. Um, Okay, let's see. So we also have, it looks like a person here kicking a ball. Okay, we also have a heart with an arrow. Uh, we also have a person up here that looks like they're trying to catch the ball. So I do feel like there is romantic love here. Okay, there, there is uh, a real leaning into the amorous for you. Um you know, so I do feel like outside of this family stuff and these old dynamics and, and old histories, um, yeah, you've built this life. You maybe have a wonderful partner. Uh, maybe, you know, it is that you are, um, dating somebody that you, that you're really into and you can see a future with them. And maybe it is that you're still looking but I do feel that there is love here and it is a romantic love. And there is a sense of the ball going back and forth. There's like a play between the two of you, not like a playing games or mind games, but no, enjoying interacting with each other, being involved, being present in the relationship, um, having your attention focused on one another. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, I need a drink. I'm at the end of my day. I filmed all morning <laughs> and then I went out and did stuff all day. And then, um, now it's night. So I'm trying to get ahead a little bit. And this is like my, I think six or six or seventh, or I don't know, reading of the day. So my voice is um, going to give out here pretty soon. <laughs> I'm going to, this is going to be my last one, I think. Um, so I'm sorry, be patient with me. I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, I do. I, I feel like there is really an involvement there. Also, we have the flower that is blooming here. So I know that it is good. I know that things are good. Um, and there is, you know, there is a, I can like a smile on your face as you think about, uh, you know, this relationship or this potential relationship. Okay. Let's see. Now we have the number one, seven, one. Okay. One, seven, one. Okay. 
We have what looks like, I'm going to go with bull's head. So maybe a Taurus person, maybe a bull person. Okay, we also have a snake down here. Actually, we have two snakes. And we have, it looks like a little dragonfly. We have a little chili pepper. Uh, we have a person sitting with the snakes all around them. Um, and we have a nut. Okay. So... Yeah, I feel like we have this bull energy, okay? Um, and I almost wonder if this is you. Do you have a prominent tour or yeah, Taurus placement in the top in your big three, right? Um, solar, lunar, or uh, ascendant? Um, maybe that, but it could also be that you're just really strong-willed, right? Kind of hard-headed about some things. Um, I just, I, with the snakes around, I feel like you're really like immersing yourself in studying, um, learning something, learning some new skills. Maybe you've gone back to school or you're like working on a certification or, you know, something. Um, and I think that you're really, I mean, just really into it. The dragonfly is interesting because you think, oh, these, you know, they're cute and they're like little airplanes and they, you know, they kind of are neat how they maneuver around and stuff. Well, they are the kind of apex predator of bugs um, because they're aerial, right? And um, they absolutely just eat so many bugs. And so um, I look at that and I'm like, yeah, this is like a very uh, tactical, a very um, mindful and you're really good at anticipating, making plans, sticking to them, having like backup things, scenarios. You're just so in the zone, right? And I feel like as you are evolving this education or, you know, whatever it is that you're really studying, or maybe it's your new favorite interest or uh, hobby or whatever, um, there is a sense of a rising confidence and ability here. Um, this isn't just like idly reading and what, you know, it's going in one ear, not the other. Um, it, you're reading it and forgetting it immediately. No, this is like you are really gaining uh, knowledge and understanding, right? And I can see you putting that into, uh, into use, okay? Making it functional, creating wisdom, transmuting that knowledge into wisdom. Um, now, we also have the nuts. So I feel like you're really planting a seed for the future, so that leads me to believe that this probably is something like work related or, uh, you know, an ability to create resources. OK, so the tree or the nut, you know, you bury it, it turns into a tree, the tree um, sprouts and then, you know, hopefully takes hold and you grow something sturdy, a legacy. And so I feel like this is maybe going to be that key for you. This might be the thing that really kind of shows you the way forward as far as your finances, as far as the career, um, creating something lasting for yourself. And we have that chili pepper. So I immediately think that, yeah, this is like, um, it's like the spice of life, right? I feel like there's, it's like you're getting your groove back. It's like you're excited about this thing. You're, you're, um, you're in that place where, it, you know, it's like, what did they call that 40 chess or, you know, I don't know, whatever. You're making moves like uh, on the quantum level, right? It's just all, you can visualize it and it's all coming together and, you know, um, like the matrix or something. I don't know. Uh, but I absolutely feel you just on fire, right? That wand energy, not the oppressive part, 
but yes, the wand, the fire, um, a sense of, um, what's the word? I guess just being, uh, industrious. That's what it is. Yeah. Being kind of industrious, creating something for yourself and being so passionate about the, the, the journey towards success, abundance and all. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So I see this being like a really, um, oh, in a lot of ways, very fulfilling time. You know, the, the anticipation, I think is really the thing here is enjoying it, getting into it and, um, and, and putting your focus somewhere aside from, you know, the, um, uh, complexities of our human relationships, right? Okay. So Libra, we're going to go ahead and do our divine doors and I'm going to go ahead and flip through and I'll stop where it feels right. Okay. And it says destiny. One door closes. Another opens for you. Let the plans of destiny unravel true. <laughs> Let the plans of destiny unravel true. Yeah. Let them do their thing, I guess, you know, uh, you have to abide. I think, do we have to abide destiny? Maybe. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Are we like locked in? I don't, I mean, I, you know, I maybe vacillate a little bit between fate, destiny and free will. Um, I don't like the idea of somebody deciding for me, <laughs> but who knows? Um, so any, anyway, Libra, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It is always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit that little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It is free to subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, do it, do it, do it, do it. I read them all. <laughs> I read them all and I really do appreciate them. Um, if you are here for the first time, do think about uh, leaving that comment. I'd love to hear from you, hear what you have to say. Um, and so anyways, yeah, Libra, I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> I'm off to bed. Um, no, I'm going to go do some things and then go to bed. Um, do some chores probably. And, uh, yeah. So we'll talk in a few days. Take care of yourself. I love you. I love you. I love you. Good night, Libra.